Hey, I'm Jess. And I'm Ryan. And you're listening to Your Therapist is Not Okay. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether or not we as therapists care about our clients and why we can't be friends. Does my therapist care about me? This is a question that we get asked a lot. Like even just yesterday, Ryan, I had a client ask me, just tell me I'm your favorite client. I am, aren't I? It's obvious. Mm-hmm. And it's it's often a joke, but I do think it speaks to something relatively important that like clients are basically asking with that question, do you care about me as much as either I have care about you or I've come to rely on you? So it feels like it's constantly in the air once once we get to a certain level of relationship with clients. Yeah, and it's kind of an interesting question about like is there is this a mutual relationship? Because in most cases it's very likely that the therapist someone's been working with for a long time is working with right now is probably their favorite therapist. That's not 100% of the time. No. Nope. People have had many different therapists sometimes. But there is so much investment from the client into this relationship. So much trust and care and listening um, to what their therapist has to say that it just kind of is a very natural question I think absolutely yeah it's something that's going to come up and they're probably going to think about yeah do you care about me yeah Jess what did you say when your client asked you if they were your favorite (laughs) I I'll be honest I it's not something I let clients off the hook with Hmm. Um, because a lot of times I find that it starts as a joke, but it's usually deeper. Mm-hmm. And so with, with this particular client, we went deeper mm-hmm. and I brought up a couple questions for them to maybe consider. The first thing I said was, I think this is the first time we're really bringing our relationship into the room. And it seems like we've really created a safe and pretty important space here for us, pretty intimate space here for us. So I started with that just acknowledging. And I asked, what would it mean to be my favorite? What does that signify? Um, And being able to do that, it felt like we were actually able to talk about the client saying that I am one of the safest relationships that she has. And also that that's what they, that's usually the answer that, well, Jess, I really, have come to like look forward to these sessions. I really love this. Um, this aspect of just us getting to have safety here or banter or laughter or being able to kind of share in these moments. A lot of clients I've been able to be with them from a certain thing, let's say let's call it singleness, to having a relationship, having kids. Like I've been able to walk clients through life. And being able to have that kind of witness means something to them. So I, I, do- I dove in deeper. And often the other question is, when I ask that, they're, they're like, I kind of wish we could go out for a pint. Mm. Or another one was like, I want to take you to brunch. I want to just like sit over and just giggle like we do here, but like in person at a restaurant. Mm. And so I think for me to like actually go and like not just have it be like, yes, you are or no, you're not. It's actually actually going on here when you make that quip Mm. so they don't get off the hook (laughs) that brings me back to a chance i've had in the past where i was actually able to do something special in person with a client because of practicality so it was still within the therapeutic frame i worked remote only remotely for a time from new york city with clients in denver um where i was working for a nonprofit. And I would go back occasionally for um, work kind of meetings that were about administration stuff. And when I was back in town, I could meet with my clients in person, Mm -hmm. which kind of had that kind of special feel of like, could we do something that feels more intimate and more special? Mm -hmm. Um, And I found that that really for some clients and sometimes for me as well, kind of uh, helped us feel like we were getting a special celebration of our relationship and the work that we had done. Uh, would you guys meet in your office or would you find you guys would actually go somewhere else? Oh, no. In the office. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely in the office. 
but even just that chance of seeing you in person after seeing you virtual, that was really important. Yes, it felt like another layer of intimacy, I think. That's so interesting, Ryan, because actually we hold a lot of workshops at Centered Self, um, often trying to bring therapy like off the couch and doing things that are more embodied and sometimes um, physical. For example, um, at the time of this podcast, it hasn't happened yet, but will have happened is we're holding a workshop for women identifying clients on experiencing what trauma might often look like in terms of how we hold it in our body, mm. bringing in a holistic nutritionist to kind of talk about where the gut is in all of that. And I find a lot of my clients often will say, oh, I want, I'm going to come to this so that I'll get to see you in person. Mm. That's really special because then within the boundaries of the work that you offer, safe and confidential boundaries, clients do get that special experience of getting to see you in person. Yeah. Getting to work with you in that embodied way. Exactly. And this has happened over and over. We host them all the time. And so clients will go on the website and they'll or they'll go on our Instagram to see like when's the next in-person workshop. Mm -hmm. So it brings back that point you're you're talking about of what do what does that kind of aspect of a relationship outside of just the realm of virtual or the therapy space mean for clients and when we talk about do you care about me it's another aspect of having maybe more of us mm. yeah ryan i guess what i'm interested in is what's what's underneath this kind of aspect of caring of clients maybe wanting more of wanting to be our favorite of wondering if we care about them what do you think is underneath all of that what's really being said here I think that for many clients, when they're so vulnerable with us and they share so much, they're so generous with processing through the trauma that they're experiencing or have experienced, that there can then be this question of, am I too much for you? Mm. Do you still want to work with me? Um do you feel frustrated or bored by me? Um, and so I think there can really be that way of seeking reassurance that we're still on good terms mm. and that you still want me to be your client. And so I think it's a little amped up from that sometimes to the point of like, not only do you want me to still be your client, but I'm your favorite client and you never want me to stop coming. Mm. And that you'll you'll give me that permission in a sense of like, please never stop coming. Mm. Please be there for me. I think it can also express a frustration with that fundamental part of the ther therapeutic frame that is, this will probably end at huh. some point. Maybe in many years, maybe in a few months, maybe it's the last session when this comes up. Mm. but there's that frustration with just knowing that therapy will come to an end and if we were friends if we were just going to brunch or coffee together yeah that we might be ending this relationship but there's a new one on the horizon mm -hmm. huh. and the amount of work that clients do it's almost like we've done all this together why can't there be more here mm. Mm -hmm. that desire for it to continue a lot of these questions about are you bored with me are you frustrated with me these are questions we've actually received from clients when we were doing a little bit of research mm -hmm. about themes that would be meaningful for this podcast um and just the questions that clients have about their therapists mm -hmm. um, so i wanted to share that these are not just from our our direct client experience, but they're also from general questions that people who have been, are, or will be clients have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were doing that workshop in Chicago and a lot of times people were like, um, when we were kind of getting some feedback, they were like, these are some of the main ones that came up. Do you get frustrated when I bring the same story or do you really care about me? One of our favorites was, do you talk about me to your friends? Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. And I th there were three or four of, are you so bored? Yeah. 
so I think this is actually a major theme that people kind of start to wonder about. And I know for myself as a client with my therapist, I usually like just <laughs> egotistically, I'm like, of course, I'm their favorite client. How could I not be? Bringing some Leo energy. I'm a Leo and that is my energy. <laughs> but I guess kind of thinking through this mm -hmm. and the frustration that we know clients are experiencing, um, I'm just curious in your thought, in your words, why can't we be friends with our clients? That is kind of the major question, like still on the table, isn't it? I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I genuinely want to be friends with my clients. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I would love to like, or I think about what it'd be like to go out for a pint or go out for a brunch. Sometimes I, I do think about that. It's not uncommon for me when I've been spending time with clients to have such a warm feeling or I look at my schedule and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, of course I do. I'm human. And I do genuinely want this, especially because our relationship is built on intimacy. And I think the thing about the way you and I work is because we're so relational and we build on the relationship as a means for healing. Mm -hmm. That's our rubric of psychodynamic is that, of course, it takes both of us to be in that relationship and so for me I feel that and when you've seen a client for enough time you build a very specific kind of little ecosystem mm. of how we start sessions of how we talk of our banter our private jokes like, just like any other relationship when you've been seeing a client long enough and you know so much about them it's not uncommon for them to know little things about you. Yeah. 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 And very much what you're saying there about like, there are jokes that only exist with those clients. I have definitely caught myself wanting to tell a joke with a friend or family member and then realizing, oh, they wouldn't get that. <laughs> that's not, that's not the client I see. Uh, eight o'clock on Wednesdays. Yes, exactly. And I'm the only person that actually thinks that joke is funny. Yes. I mean, if clients don't think they impact us, they're so wrong. Of course they do. Yeah. And I think for me, that's my first. Like, if I think about my human side, if I think about me in the relationship, that's my first response. And my therapist's response is, being friends is never an option. And it can't be because there's so much power in this relationship. Uh, this past week, as you well know, I hurt my eye. Mm -hmm. And clients have kind of had to see it because I didn't stop client work. I was nervous about what they'd think. They didn't care. They just made sure I was okay. And I was fine. It just was a bit unsightly. Mm -hmm. And then this week seeing clients, so many of them are like, you're looking better. Like your eye looks like it's getting better. Like there's that part that they'll get of me but they won't necessarily know all the nuances of things that are happening in my life. Mm -hmm. There's a power there. As much as they get me, they don't necessarily know all the nuances of who I am, of what I'm going through, of things that are, are mine. And that's necessary. It creates this level of power in the relationship that I think is really important, that I'm here for you, that my role is to hold your story, to care, to be there, to challenge because the care is there. And because of that, the relationship is built very specifically on me being the one that you bring things to. And so it's not friendship, it's intimacy, it's care. And so because of that, for one hour a week or two weeks, a client gets to have a space that's theirs, that they get to work through things in their time, and they have somebody that's walking alongside them. And in that sense, it's so intimate, but it's not because it's an equal, necessarily, a relationship. Right. And something we've talked about before is, as well as just knowing that, and sometimes sharing with our clients that if we were friends, we couldn't offer them the same thing. We're friends, mm -hmm. but we're not each other's therapists. No. Nope. We can't give each other. We can be caring. Mm -hmm. We can be loving. We can be supportive when we're going through transitions. But 
not the same way as a therapist can because they have to have we have to have mm -hmm. one foot in the client's world and one foot in our world yeah so that we can offer different perspectives we can notice and challenge patterns in a way that friends and family don't and or aren't willing to because they have a stake in making sure that they never upset or jar their loved one and we are upset and jarring as therapists <laughs> you and i yes <laughs> <laughs> i think that's exactly the point that is so perfect when you have a stake in someone's story mm. be it a family member a partner a friend if you were to give the challenge that you and i are able to the friendship could be severed or there could be a rift there. Knowing that we are here with the best intentions mean that we have a task of being able to constantly want a client to be more self-aware, to think about where this is coming from, to look in the past. And because it's not about us in the same way, that we're able to just be in their world with all the experience of what it means to listen well, to find the interconnections in a way that a friend can't mm -hmm. and to take away that role that we have would be actually detrimental and i don't know if you're anything like me but if i see a client on the street even if i haven't seen them for years they're still my client mm -hmm. i still feel that way of course yeah absolutely that relationship is important and lasting yeah and that's also a really important reason why we can't switch to friends after therapy ends is because both the therapist and the client have to continue to hold that sense of the other person being in the same relationship with them. Mm. After therapy ends, our clients get to take us away. Mm. Maybe as just that little voice in their head sometimes, which clients sometimes share with me and they're like, I was so annoyed. I was having this fight with my partner. And then I heard you saying, what if you shared how you felt? <laughs> and it's infuriating, but it's there and it can help them at times. Yeah. To process through things and, and within themselves, take those third perspectives that help them to grow. But now they get to be the origin of that. Yeah. There's that term, isn't it? Internalized therapist. Yes where they take us and they think about what would, even though I'm not in the space with Ryan right now, what would they say? Mm -hmm. mm. That's fantastic. That's a great example of that. Is there anything else you want to add before we close off today? I would really want to reiterate the point that uh, while we cannot be friends with our clients, our clients are still really special to us. It's a unique relationship and we really care about clients um, and we do enjoy and relish in the inside jokes just as much as they do. Maybe even sometimes more. <laughs> so not being friends doesn't mean we don't care. No. If anything, it's a different but special kind of intimacy. Mm -hmm. I keep coming back to that word, but I think it's exactly that. There is a very important bond that you get to have with your therapist. And yes, there are boundaries there. And yes, they're frustrating at times. But they're always there so that no matter what stage in life you are, even if you haven't seen your therapist in a year, that you know you can walk back through that door and they're right there and they still have your story. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, check out our others and stay tuned for even more episodes coming up. Follow us and leave a review on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please tell your friends. You can also follow us on Instagram too at your therapist is not okay. Also, if you have any questions that you want us to answer, send us a DM there. We would love to answer your questions. And a lot of our topics come from uh, listeners just like you. <laughs>